Turf tires. They're great at not ripping up grass, but that's about it. If you're looking for more traction, then turf tires is not what you want. Today, we're going to throw in a set of AT101s and see how much better traction they provide. Now the question is, will these rip up my lawn? And there's kind of two schools of thought on this. One, you're ripping it up anyway because your turf tires are slipping. And these are going to rip it up worse because they're a tractor log. I tend to think that I'm going to rip it up just as bad, if not actually a little bit less with these because I'll actually have traction. I won't be at the bottom of the hill spinning out. The other reason I want to install these tires is I have a lot of hills. And I realize that zero turn mowers are not meant for hills, but that's neither here nor there because I have a zero turn and I have hills and I want to mow these hills with this mower. So hopefully these will allow me to uh, slide down the hill less and also give me better traction to get back up the hill, be able to pull my aerator, which I've got a couple hundred pounds of weight on and just do other things like that. As you can see, these tires here are actually, the tread's completely full of mud right now. I use this thing like it's a subcompact. I really beat the snot out of it. I don't just go across this plush lawn. I'm honestly hoping that these tires will help me achieve the things I would like to do with this mower. Now I realize I should have jack stands under this. I'm not gonna mess around with that because I'm not getting under the mower, so I'm in absolutely no danger. The only danger here is the mower could fall and damage something. Never get under something that's not supported with jack stands, but like I said, I'm not gonna get underneath of it, so. I'm not concerned with it. And there we have it. Both our tires are pulled off. I've got one new tire mounted up. You can see them side by side. This one here is a little more balloony, more domed because I've got it overinflated. It's at about 25 PSI right now. I just want to make sure the bead fully seats. It's a little bit of a booger to get on there. So I'm going to run it around the yard a little bit like that just to make sure it seats and then I'll air it down. This one's at 8 PSI, which is probably where I'll run these as well. Honestly, this one looks quite a bit narrower than that one. And I don't know if it's just because it's it's more rounded on the corners. And that was one of the things it was advertised as was it was a muted uh, shoulder lug, which I think is supposed to help not rip up versus a, a squared off corner. Being more uh, rounded over like that, I think it's gonna do better as far as not ripping up the grass. Height wise, it's almost the exact same. Almost the exact same height. So here's what it had. Kenda Commercial Turf 22 by 11-10. And now we have Carlisle AT101s 21 by 11 11. Something else that I really like about these tires, here's the original Kendas, made in Taiwan. The new Carlisles, made in the USA. I laid them on their side, and you can see that the, the new ones are maybe just a hair narrower, but like I said, they've got that muted um, corner to help not rip up the turf. Both tires are mounted and reinstalled. I'm going to go run around the yard a bit, make sure those uh, beads are fully seated. Then I'll drop the air pressure down to about 10 or so, and uh, we'll see how it does. Well, you can see the lines in the yard here where we were driving. It didn't make any deep ruts. It didn't tear up the grass. I don't know. It seems like uh, the naysayers seem to think that these tires will just shred your yard. I don't understand why. Now, obviously, if you're just driving along, stop, do a 180, and go back the other way, yeah, it's going to tear up grass where that tire just sat and pivoted. Uh, but, you know, a turf tire is going to do the exact same thing. Yes, they're called zero turns because they can just spin around in a circle like that but you shouldn't do that. The proper way to do it is go across your yard, and at the end of the pass, you fork to the left, you back up to the right, and you go back the other way. It's called the Y turn. You go the other way, you fork to the left, you back up to the right, you go this way. Fork to the left, back to the right, and come back. Essentially, it's a three-point turn every time you turn. It's super quick and easy to do, or when you get to the end of the yard, 
you don't just sit and pivot on that one tire. You push one stick forward and pull the other stick back. The only spot we did tear up a little bit of turf is right here. This little disturbance right here, you can see I kind of just barely started to get, oh here we go, I got it a little bit there. That's because I'm backing up a hill. Once again, the camera does not do this hill justice. It's much steeper than it looks. It, honestly, it's a little sketchy going up and down it because the, the front end of the mower is kind of bouncing like this as I'm doing it. And I was going downhill, stopped, and tried to back up. And for a brief second, it spun, then it caught and went. Before with the turf tires, it would have sat there and spun all day. I would have never tried to back up. Well, okay, big deal. It doesn't turf the grass. But what we all want to know is can you drive through mud? And not just mud, standing water. That's right, we're gonna try and drive through there. I don't know why, but I'm sure gonna try. Also, I'm gonna climb this hill over here. I wish you guys could really see how steep it is. And here, take a look. Before I walk up there, I just want you to see, this stuff is soft. I mean, I'm sinking right in. It's sloppy, slimy. Something I definitely shouldn't be trying to drive a zero turn up. Like I said, I got a lot of hills. The whole backyard slopes down this way. From there to where I'm standing, it dishes down this way. And, uh, you know, down at the bottom here, when I get down there, if I don't make this turn at the very bottom just right, I end up sliding off into that muddy mess. I'm gonna get that seated, but it's not yet, so I don't mow it. And it's just a pain in the rear. But now that I've got these better tires, yes, I might tear up a little bit of turf trying to back up, but I can back up. Before, if I got down there and made the turn wrong, I was just stuck. I couldn't do anything. If I tried to back up, I just sat there and spun and tore up grass and got nowhere. At least now, if I do tear up just a little bit, I can at least get traction. So based on using it for an afternoon, I've decided, no, you're not gonna tear up any more grass. At least I'm not, the way that I use it. If you try and drive through a swamp, you're gonna get it stuck. You're gonna pack the wheels full of mud like this and gonna have to hose it off. I would definitely buy these again. I wouldn't hesitate for a second. They're not gonna destroy your yard. I love them. Even look at, I mean, look at this. It's just packed. This sloppy, gross mud, and the tread's pretty darn full. But even that, I drove it all the way up this hill. The turf tires, no way. Being that packed full of mud, I would have never made it up the hill. Super thrilled. I would definitely buy this again. I would encourage you guys to seriously think about this if you are having traction issues with your zero turn. And for me, the biggest thing is I wanted to pull an aerator, which I could never do across this back hill, because I, I like to weight it down. I like to put 200 pounds or so of cinder blocks on it, and there was no way my mower was gonna pull that up this hill. I was just gonna sit and spin. So now I can do some yard work that I couldn't do before, and I can mow this hill safer, because I won't be sliding down it.